Hey guys, so uh, today I'm here with Maria. Um, she's a student and a friend of mine. And we decided to get together today to talk a little bit about Taylor Swift's chart. And the reason for this was that we've been thinking about doing this video for a while now. We tried before, but things didn't go according to plan because it was during Mercury retrograde. And um, then I thought about putting the, uh, my, my uh, YouTube activity on hold for a while to focus on my PhD. But then, you know, Taylor Swift uh, released a new album on Friday. And so we decided that this was the adequate time to, to, to do the video. So the idea is just to look a bit at uh, Taylor Swift's chart and to discuss some of the themes in the music and some of the, the persona, the public persona she has created. Um, according to her chart. And basically it's also part of a plan to introduce more astrological interpretation, actual astrological interpretation in the channel, rather than just you know, discussing things about astrology in more abstract terms. So that's, that's basically it. And so Maria and I are f fans of Taylor Swift. We discovered this during the courses that I was teaching. And it's always been a sort of private joke between us that this is a thing. Um, and, and, and basically that's that. So I'm going to, to give her the words so she can introduce herself and then we'll move on to chart interpretation. Uh, thank you, Simon. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Maria. Uh, I'm a friend of Simon, as he, he said, uh, and I'm just uh, an astrologer for fun. Like I, I learned astrology to know a little bit about it. Uh, and so I can do this kind of thing of seeing the charts of celebrities and the charts of friends and just uh, have fun with it. Uh, so yeah, so this uh, Taylor Swift is quite an interesting case uh, in the sense that her chart uh, is actually a lot uh, on her um, uh, on her music, and uh, you can see it in her career. And uh, one of the favorite things for me and Simon as well is the fact that she is a Scorpio rising. Uh, what uh, what can you say about that, uh, Simon? Yes. So I need I need to say some something boring in the beginning, which is yeah. that there are two conflicting times for Taylor Swift's birthday chart. So birth chart. So you'll have in uh, Astro Data Bank, which is one of the biggest repositories of public figures charts. Uh, you'll, they'll say that the data is dirty, so that's a, that's a, a way of categorizing birth data because there are two conflicting, um, two conflict, uh, conflicting dates. But there's a, a lot of reason to believe, actually, that the, the date with Scorpio rising is um, is more is actually more accurate than the the other date, which has Capricorn rising. She still has a lot of Capricorn energy, anyway in this yes. chart so that's that's fine but so we do and 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 both maria and i always had this i i think this feeling that she was a scorpio rising even when the only chart available was was the capricorn one um yes. so that was more of a confirmation of something that we thought it was pretty obvious i think i think <laughs> that uh the way her public persona is built in many ways and and the mm -hmm. way it was built before and after the album reputation has a lot to do with has a lot to do with Scorpio, and it has a lot to do with this sort of venomous side of Scorpio that that can be really passive aggressive, or that can be really uh, that, that that can in really enjoy a sort of confrontation and this sort of um, poisonous and passive aggressive remarks that a lot of her music has, and it's yes. it, it's actually really cool. But I think you're probably you're probably the, the the expert here more than me. So if you want to, to comment on that, and we can then develop the Scorpio side, that that would be great. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's fine. Like um, uh, personally, the, this is uh, a personal preference. I, I feel like most of Taylor Swift fans are not for this side, but the two of us happen to be. I really appreciate her patty side. It's something that drew me to her. Uh, and I think it was the same for you too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with the look what you made me do and all that Im Im imagery of, uh, of death 
and uh, revenge, you know, like very powerful. Uh, I was already a fan before, but that completely sold me. Uh, and I've been a great fan ever since. Uh, and so we have a lot of examples of like uh, Bad Blood in, in the album 1989 with, with the, the revenge against Katy Perry for a very silly reason. They're over it now. But all of that army of singers and popular people just like, oh, we have Bad Blood now. It's just like so extra, you know, and even Shake It Off and uh, uh, Blank Space uh, as well. So in, this is 1989. But even before then, with songs like Better Than Revenge, uh, which is, you know, you have to turn off your feminism to listen to that song, but it's uh, the, the, the lyrics of the song are very like about revenge and like hating that person for taking away the guy that you care about, etc. And uh, so she's always at this side and it's something that I particularly appreciate about her. And it's, it's just a lot of fun to see it so well represented in, in her chart, in her Scorpio rising and then in the, the Mars that hits the, the angle as well uh, so yeah so definitely there's there's also something we we're not talking about this in in a I, I, at least i'm not talking about this in a judgmental matter a manner mm -hmm. much more in a kind Neither of am I. <laughs> uh, aesthetical yes, yes. choice but but yes. that mars there is a very self-centered mars in a sense mm -hmm. that it rules the first house so it's a ruler of the ascendant which is a very important planet in people's charts and it's then conjunct the ascendant so it's very very prominent and these um and there's an image in look what you made me do in in, in the video clip um that for me is really sort of um is really sort of this sort of illustrates these mm -hmm. uh specific position which is when when uh she's singing at the at, at the sort of of the top of a mountain of tailors that are yeah. um that are climbing towards her and there's a huge t a huge neon t uh, yes. behind her and 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 she's talking about how she'll you know she'll be present in your in your bad dreams she'll be the actress in your bad dreams and all of this yes this is actually this is such stark scorpio imagery not in the sense that you know a lot of modern astrology thinks as, of scorpio uh, merely as as kind of overly sexual some somehow mm -hmm. But um, but more than than the, this the sort of over, over sexualization of of Scorpio in modernity, it has a lot more to do with with the pettiness and with this uh, and 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 with the poison, the idea yes. of poison, the idea of death, the idea the idea of obsession as well. Sorry, the idea of obsession. Yes, the idea of obsession definitely. So this is the, the, this is much more powerful. Um, and yeah, and, and, and I was just thinking about bad blood. Of course, bad blood sort of is an imagery that brings you back to poison in a way, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's a lot of very interesting things going on, I think, in, in, this, uh, in this first house. Um, in this first house and in this Scorpio, in the Ascendant, definitely. But mm -hmm. of course, there are other sides to Taylor Swift. That's what we were talking about before starting yes. the, starting the video, which is the new album. You know, it's it's it does have a reference to Scorpio that Maria will talk about in a second. But it's it does not really it does not really cater to this petty side. So there's this sort of uh, mutable quality to 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 Taylor Swift's work um, mm -hmm. that is quite baffling in a way. So you have to to fish for it around the horoscope. Yes. But you want um, do you want to mention the, the scorpion first and then we'll, we'll move on to that? Uh, yeah, so like uh, in the new album, like uh, I, I don't think mostly the, the themes are very Scorpio, but there's at least two songs that the, the Scorpio comes across. And the main one is, of course, Mad Woman, uh, which she says that it's about uh, the tale of a misfit widow getting glee gleeful revenge on the town that cast her out. Uh, that's what she says about the song. So again, the topic of revenge and, and Scorpio. And it, it includes the lyrics, does a scorpion sting when fighting back? They strike to kill and you know I will. Uh, and this is very Taylor Swift because she's she's not af afraid to pack her punches. She maybe disguises it somehow, but she she stings, you know, it's a, a Taylor Swift thing, she stings. And there's like some lyrics in this song that kind of like bring us back to Kanye and, and Kim and that old food feud that has been following us like, or that has been following Taylor's career for like quite a few years now. 
and uh, she she talks about a couple that uh, comes uh, after her or after this character this mad woman in the song and so uh, it's hard not to make those associations with this part of, of Taylor's history uh, but yeah but of course this new album like uh, listening to it people think of sadness of love uh, there's a lot of like infidelity topics there's a, a lot of like uh, uh, young love nostalgia and that's not a necessarily uh, a scorpio aesthetic uh, that might bring us more to our cancer moon maybe yes, uh, what do you think i would think i would think that that sort of aesthetic is much more of, of the cancer Jupiter side of it. So I would think mm -hmm. I would think that in terms of the way um, in terms of the way her songs kind of play out, I, I'm always sort of um, I'm always sort of drawn to three positions here, uh, which is the Scorpio as we talked about and the Sun in Sagittarius, and then and then the debacle in um, in Cancer, which is you know, which is the Moon, uh, the Moon Jupiter uh, conjunction in the eighth house in Cancer, and and the reason for this is that you you do get a lot of nostalgia in her songs, you know, if you if if I I, I haven't heard uh, the last album with much attention, but uh, if you look at at songs like uh, Cornelia Street or Miss Americana and stuff like that, there's a building, mm -hmm. uh, there there's the construction of a sort of Nostalgia Empire that makes sense with with other singers like Lana Del Rey, who also kind of goes for that aesthetic and also has um, cancer positions in in the eighth, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a sort of aesthetic that really works as well right now, right? You will, you have we've mm -hmm. been during this time, you know, for for a number of years and and a number of years in the future, going through Neptune in Pisces, and so nostalgia is a thing in pop culture right now and, yes. and nostalgic aesthetic so that works really well i think and and also because this moon uh, is uh then in tension with um it's then in tension with with aquarius so of course because it's an opposite and aquarius generally represents the the breaking of stuff so you you will have nostalgia for things that are felt as completely lost you know things in the past that uh suffered a cut that that seems to be um, it, it, it does not seem to be recoverable. That's uh, basically what what I would uh, what I would say. I also think that the Sagittarius position has a lot to do with um, her sort of hopeful personality that exists in stark contrast with um, with uh, with the Scorpio personality. That's why I, I'm interested in, for example, um, the fact that she she decided to name a song the archer in a way despite the fact that you can probably find um scorpio scorpio energies or scorpio themes in that song as well so and, and this has to do with something in astrology which is when someone has a chart like like taylor swift's which uh in which uh the sign of the sun and the sign of the ascendant are adjacent you know these signs they don't have an ex an aspect between them so they are very different in a way and they will produce people that have uh, personalities that do not seem very congruent um, on a surface level. Mm -hmm. So yes, do you want to say anything about um, her son of of the things I said? You know about yeah. Sagittarius or yeah, yeah. Um, of and course. Like I, I, I think Taylor herself uh, likes her Sagittarius son a lot. Uh, I'm not sure if she's that into astrology or not. Uh, mm -hmm. It's my belief that she does, because there's a, a couple of astrology references in her work. Uh, the archer, as you mentioned, is like the most obvious one, because even the, the symbol for the song at the time, it was the Sagittarius single, uh, symbol, sorry, not yeah. single. Um, and the, the, the themes of, of the song, they're, they're very intense and it's about like the, that trouble that uh, Sagittarius uh, has with intimacy. Like uh, they, they, sometimes they think of themselves as too much and uh, they want everything. And uh, maybe if they throw the arrow over there, it will be better over there. So of course that brings a lot of struggles into their intimate lives. And uh, the song is very much about that. Uh, so I think it's impossible for her 
to not at least care about Sagittarius, if not anything else, even though I do think she also cares about Scorpio. Mm -hmm. um, and there's others, uh, my favorite song, or maybe it's not my favorite song anymore, but I still love it a lot, which is State of Grace uh, from the album Red. Uh, she has a, she's talking about a lover, whoever that is, it doesn't matter now. And she mentions that they are twin fire signs. Uh, so, I mean, she knows that Sagittarius is a fire sign. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I, th I think like you said, like this hopeful side of her, like th the more party goer side, not that she's that much of a party girl, because she's not also because of this Cancer moon. But when she's happy, when she wants to be with people, uh, she, she's very much a giver in that sense. And I, I think the Sagittarius comes mm -hmm. out uh, in those in those um, in those moments. Uh, this last album, I, I wouldn't say it's uh, an album where like uh, in folklore i wouldn't say that sagittarius is a big yeah. thing it doesn't really at except least... in the title probably so that that's one of the folklore. things yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. i guess that called my attention was his yeah, yeah. Uh, change to i i just have i just think that these you know if you think of lore i mean i mean it's not that folklore is necessarily something evidently associated to to sagittarius unless mm -hmm. we make the connection between lore and knowledge you know and 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 so that to me makes uh, that to me makes a certain amount of sense especially yes. because her closest aspect is between is an opposition between jupiter and mercury so there's mm -hmm. this tension here between between you know high learning and practical learning in a way that that would be present um so that that did call to my to my attention but it also calls to my attention this this thing how how you know dramas in the music community which is a very mercurial you know you do see a lot of singers and, and people like that with, with prominent mercuries um you how she has a tendency to sort of uh, be in situations that blow up, so to speak, and that's very Jupiterian opposed. That's very Jupiter opposed Mercury as well. So, but on the other hand, you have the dream of music in the sense that mm -hmm. Mercury is very close to Neptune. So you have the dreaming about about um, music as as well. So I'm very interested in the in those two positions. Yes. Yeah. Um, um I, I i see what you mean and uh, you drawing attention to that because i hadn't considered it because yeah. uh, i know that she has like a stellium a capricorn stellium here that we need to address <laughs> uh, <laughs> but i hadn't considered like mercury's part in it and of course yeah. like there's this, the fact that she's a singer which is the obvious mercury thing um but then the the part with the 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 controver controversies i i didn't know that you could relate that to to mercury but of course it makes sense well well in the tension you know, in the context cheap. of tension in, yes, in the tension yes, not yes. mercury i'm just saying because of, of of the people watching not mm -hmm. uh not sort of it's it's a thing about being outspoken as well right so if you mm -hmm. think yes. if you think of jupiter as blowing up stuff or making stuff bigger there's a yes. thing about uh about blowing up stuff uh, in that sense, I think, and mm -hmm. Uranus is also very close. So there's because she also has two considerable presences in in Cancer, which are Jupiter mm -hmm. and, and 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 the Moon, which are very yes. powerful because because they are connected with Cancer. So one of them is in in its domicile, the other in exaltation, which is a mm -hmm. logical jargon to say they're powerful in Cancer. Yes. Um, and so and so they're they're causing quite a lot of stirs there i think mm -hmm. um versus the saturn also in capricorn and i just think because because in these charts specifically the the mid heaven is ruled by mercury and then mercury yes. is in capricorn in in the second so that that to me is a very powerful signature of, of a singing career mm -hmm. a specific signature of a singing career so that that was the reasoning although um Although I think there's something about ambition as well that you'll probably be more qualified to comment on than me. Uh, yeah. I've always had <laughs> no, this. No, no, definitely. That that you know she a small town girl that succeeded and so there's there's the Capricorn narratives there probably that yes. I'm not sure about. Um, I, I wouldn't say that she's a small town girl per se. Obviously, she was born in a in a, a small town, uh, 
uh, but her family was quite well off uh, and that allowed her to relocate to Nashville when she was like 13 or 14 and that was the beginning of her big music career. Uh, so um, I, I'm not sure if that fits the narrative of like actually starting from zero, you know, because it's, it's different when you are poor and when your family is quite well off to like the, 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 the beginning is a little bit different. Uh, but of course she was not known musically and she, she made her career like from her knowledge and she was already a very good singer and songwriter uh, and that's why she signed up I think she's the the youngest writer uh, youngest uh, singer to ever be signed up by Sony yes at yes, the time I mean, at I the time she was I don't know if now. in the meantime <laughs> but she was 14 when she got signed on by Sony um, so yeah uh, I, I, I think I hope that also fits the Capricorn themes but yeah, she's no, definitely as you were saying before because you were talking about ambition but you wouldn't you didn't know that much about that yeah. part of her yeah. and that's also one of the qualities that attracts me to Taylor Swift because I, I think of her as quite an ambitious person and for me that is not a negative thing at all uh, because she just wants you know she wants to make a mark she wants to be huge she wants to be uh, undeniable no matter if you like her or you mm. don't of course she has a thing for being liked and that's a lot of her pettiness coming from there of like trying to accept that she's not going to be liked by everybody, which is hilarious to me. Uh, <laughs> but she's quite ambitious. And like even the, the way that she releases her music and the way that she makes her tours, she's con constantly trying to break records. Like yeah. when she put out Lover, uh, it had like four different deluxe versions. So of course she was going to sell, sell a bazillion albums. Nobody yes. sells a bazillion albums anymore because it's streaming. And now with the folklore it's like it's a new album it was a surprise album which is quite different from what she has always done and I love that uh, it's also very interesting uh, specifically in the case of Taylor Swift so she has a surprise album she announces it the day before its release and she also announces that there are like eight different versions of the album and eight different versions of a vinyl and then a cassette like nobody listens to cassettes anymore. anymore this is not 1989 yes, you yes. know and this is such an obvious money grab and i love her for it and, i think uh, it's and, incredible and <laughs> we were just uh, actually yeah, here at home we were just checking her website and her shop was already full of merchant other merchandise in relation yes. to folklore. So that's yes. I mean, there's a very clever there's a there's a very clever merchandise side there that is very Capricorn. Um, yes, I agree with that definitely. And 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 so I, the, the words you use, the money grab, is actually quite um, it's actually quite an interesting um, quite an interesting sort of concept with such strong Capricornian energy. I do think there's there's a tension, there's an emotional tension here between um, between her cancer side that is probably much more emotional and that regards music as a much more soulful and, and emotional activity and and Capricorn which would regard music as a uh, as a way to power, really, whatever that may, a, a way to, to realize ambitions. And that's quite, I think that's quite an interesting thing. I also think that uh, we mentioned this when we were discussing originally how to make the video. And one of the things we were discussing was looking at, you know, predictive techniques. We'll probably don't go into mm -hmm. that anyway. But it's just that she has yeah. a lot of planets in Capricorn. And, mm -hmm. and uh, as, you know, transits or progressions go through all of that, those planets that are so concentrated in the same place, she gets a lot of honors very fast. So this is one of the things that is quite remarkable, is just that she's always uh, winning um, Emmys or whatever. You know, she's always, she's always kind of being acknowledged as very, very talented. And, and, yes. and it's really hard to find deeply important moments because there are many deeply important moments and so you are overwhelmed <laughs> with all with all of yes. this um which is quite which is in, in itself quite remarkable i think mm -hmm. um yes so is there something that you want to say Maria, in regards um you know like for me like it's true that she's quite acclaimed like the grammys uh, etc and uh, uh she won uh okay so last year and the, the album 
was the first album of hers that didn't uh, get to one million copies in the first week. Well, the first album since her second album. So she had like five albums with one million copies in the first week. And then Lover was like 800,000, which is incredible still. But, you know, she, she didn't get to the one million that she wanted. Um, but uh, she, that year, she, uh, Lover was the global mm -hmm. best-selling album of the year, regardless of not getting to one million copies first week. And then she was considered woman of the decade by Billboard. And she was artist, like male and female. She was uh, artist of the decade by the American Music Awards, uh, I don't know, association or, or whatever they are called. Uh, and so she, she has a lot of these awards, as you were saying, but I, I, I think... For me, the sales part is a lot more interesting mm -hmm. um, because I, I think she cares about that. She cares about those specific numbers. It's like, it's a lot easier to have a lot of awards and you have like Michael Jackson, Mariah Carey. Um, there's a lot of artists who have a, a huge collection of awards, but like this massive monstrous sales is a very... Taylor Swift and also Capricorn angle yeah. that she goes for. And then I, I think it's like incredible. And it, I, I really like it. I think it's very interesting of her to be so into this, uh, that she finds all these little tricks about it. Um, and yeah, I think this is, uh, uh, it's, it's quite interesting that the two of us managed to do a whole video about Taylor Swift without going into her uh, like her relationships which was such a big part of the first half of her career and we are just like not talking about it at all well, I, and that's fine with me yes yes i think <laughs> I, I i think that's that's overdone i think that's implicit in a lot of scorpio things that we've talked about i would yes. i would mention very fast the, the the moon in aquarius so i would say she would be targeted you know because aquarians always have this general feeling that they're being targeted for something or that they're out of place and I, I I would imagine that could make some sense with Venus in Aquarius and kind mm -hmm. of you know the, the way things are looked at but I don't I don't really I, I, I didn't really want to go there either so that's yes so that's that. <laughs> no, no, that's like, um, it, no it was just funny because yeah, it's not the, uh, what uh, I care about either all, yeah. all, all of these things are sort of implicit I guess and, and are especially yeah. implicit in the first segment about about Scorpio Scorpio yes uh, but also like her music in general because it's a, a lot of it is about relationships yeah. uh, but personally I don't care about the personal side of it I only care yeah. about the artistic side like uh, the feeling that she got out of those relationships that tr she transported into song and at the end of the day that's that's what I care about when it comes to to art it's not the personal lives it's the artistic lives there's a take uh, so this mm -hmm. idea of a take you know you have a take on something and she has and an interesting thing with, mm -hmm. with the sort of very general astrological thing that we were doing here is that um, is that she has you know she can have a Scorpio take on a relationship or a Sagittarian take on a relationship or mm -hmm. a cancer and cancerian take on a relationship and that's basically mm -hmm. what we're we're talking about it's not a relationship by itself but it's the way it's mm -hmm. colored in general as you were saying and yes. and and that way of coloring will then fit very well within certain astrological symbolisms which is mm -hmm. great okay and i think i think this is you know enough for a youtube video anyway uh, for a, yes. for a conversation <laughs> about this i think there's a lot more in depth sort of analysis that can be done but, mm -hmm. but it's probably not the time and place right now. And, and so I wanted to thank you very much, Maria, for coming here and talk, talk to me about these things. And it's, it, it was a lot of fun. And I'm sure it will be pretty funny to anyone who watches it. Um, yes. And, and yes, that's it. So do you want to say any closing words? That's on you. If you uh, no, I, I really just want to thank you for allowing me to like talk about Taylor Swift. <laughs> Uh, because I love talking about Taylor Swift and it's it's great to have like a an opportunity to do it in like a semi-professional way where we like narrow it down to astrology and etc it's like it's uh, this this was a great fun for me so thank you thank you so much okay great um and and I think listen to folklore guys listen to folklore guys
Okay, guys, so that was it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do follow Maria in uh, her Twitter. She does cry a lot about astrology and Taylor Swift. That's what she asked me to say. <laughs> and uh, her, Twitter, uh, her Twitter handle is on the video uh, description. And please do follow me on Instagram as well. And, and that's basically it. I'll be taking a break. Uh, during most of August, but I'll come back with more astrological videos. So that's that's that. Bye-bye.